Hi, I'm Dr. Brett Langston. I'm a prosthodontist and owner at Dental Implant and Aesthetic Specialist here in Brookhaven, Georgia. I'm here to help you watch your mouth. So today we're going to talk about 30s, 40s, what to expect, what's going on, and how to keep it healthy. So as you age, like the rest of your body, your mouth undergoes changes. Uh, the biggest change that we see as you progress through time is eventually your bone starts to kind of gradually creep away. And so as that bone tissue drops a little bit, the tissue goes with it. So what you might start to notice is right at the gum line, and usually it starts in the back teeth, the gum starts to pull away from the tooth and the, the, the crown of the tooth where it was meeting flush with the gum tissue before, all of a sudden that gum tissue is pulled down a little bit and exposed the root structure. And that can be problematic for a number of reasons. Primarily, aesthetics. The root structure is yellower and darker, um, but also the root is not as preventative and protective of the nerve inside. And so cold food, hot foods occasionally, all of a sudden will start to be a lot more sensitive causing and cause your teeth to get little zings and little hot spots. Now if these are occasional, they don't happen all the time, not a big deal. But if you're starting to notice in one area, or generally speaking in your mouth, that you're getting a lot more sensitivity to cold food, Definitely come in, see your dental professional, let us take a look, and it may be something as simple as changing your toothpaste. It may be something as simple as giving you a prescription toothpaste. We have a handful of toothpastes that we use that are higher in fluoride content. And what that fluoride does is it helps the tooth build a, a protective layer over the nerve, almost like a thermal protective layer over the nerve that the root structure doesn't normally have. An uh, interesting study came out recently that with the trend in people drinking bottled water and drinking filter water, we're getting away from tap water. And one of the problems with that is that without drinking tap water, a lot of people aren't getting the fluoride that they need. Um, so to combat that, we need to have higher fluoridated toothpaste, drink more tap water, or some kind of combination of the two. If the recession reaches the point where you're having chronic sensitivity, always painful, there are a couple of options we have. From the minimally invasive, uh, a small filling, if you've got some tooth erosion to kind of fill where that tooth is worn away, or all the way on the other end to a periodontal procedure, which is basically a gum procedure where uh, our esteemed colleagues, the periodontists, will take that tissue and raise it up over that exposed root structure and then put it back down so that you don't have that cold or uh, any kind of direct zing to the tooth structure. So when you were 18, teeth were nice and white and bright, everything was great. Now you may start to notice that as you creep into your 30s and 40s, your teeth are darker, have a little bit more tinge to them, whether it's from just natural wear and tear or whether it's from drinking and eating habits. I'm a big offender of that. I drink Diet Coke all the time. Diet Coke is rough on the teeth. All carbonated beverages are rough on the teeth because they're a combination of the acid, which is extremely pH low, um, the carbonation, uh, and then if you drink any kind of sugar beverages in association with all that, it can cause a lot of breakdown of that enamel structure. Uh, so it's really important if you drink Diet Coke or you drink regular Coke or you drink anything along those lines, try not to sip on them all day. Being from the South, sweet tea, love it. It's a part of life. But unfortunately, if you're constantly basing your teeth in that super sugar saturated substrate, you're going to start to see decay and especially you're going to wear away that enamel and get sensitivity and issues. Staining, there's a handful of, of things that we do on a daily basis or weekly basis that causes staining worse. Number one, red wine. Big culprit. I like red wine. I think it's great. Supposedly, a glass a day is healthy for you, but the tannins in the grape can really stain the teeth, especially if the enamel is starting to be worn. Uh, so again, I wouldn't recommend brushing your teeth right after every glass of wine. That'd be weird. It would taste gross. But it might not be a bad idea to, to, to rinse with some water, alternate a glass of water in there so you're not leaving that material on the surfaces of the teeth. Some other big things, dark chocolate, uh, strawberries, blueberries, tea. Um, tea can really stain teeth. So again, it's important if you're going to have these things in your diet, which again, a lot of them have great health components, you need to alternate with some water or some kind of some substrate that will rinse that off. Some of the other factors that really impact tooth color, uh, smoking, Nicotine in general, whether it's tobacco, uh, whether it's chewless, uh, smokeless tobacco, a lot of those things will, will stain teeth really bad. And so the, some of the cool things we have nowadays, we've got lots of whitening products, we've got lots of options to uh, bleach your teeth to get them back to that color that you're aiming for. But you gotta be aware, if your dietary habits don't change, we can make your teeth look great but it's just gonna go right back to where it was over time. So the combination of the solution, I guess, is we can bleach the teeth and then we have to modify our behaviors so that we're not constantly bathing those teeth in staining materials. 
So another problem that we start to encounter as we get into our 30s and 40s is our teeth start to get a little bit of wear and tear on them. Whether that's through cracks, whether that's through they're starting to break down. And you know, once a tooth has had a cavity and it has had to have a filling, that tooth structure is automatically weakened. It's not as strong, it's not as whole and intact. And so over time, a lot of times small fillings are gonna grow up to be big fillings and then big fillings are gonna grow up to be crowns. And so it's just something to be aware of. Once you've had fillings done, you gotta watch out for fractures and cracks. And so the way you can prevent those, or at least minimize the, the occurrence, is avoid misusing your teeth. And, and what I mean by that is, probably the number one factor for us is ice. Uh, chewing ice is, while it can be therapeutic, while people really like it, chewing ice is horrible for your teeth. And it's because of two things. Number one, it freezes the teeth, so it makes them hard and makes them a little bit more prone to cracking because of the temperature. And then on top of that, you've got the hard ice. So when you're crunching and grinding on the ice, you're kind of setting your teeth up for failure. It's good for business for us, but it's bad for your teeth. So I definitely wouldn't recommend it. Some other factors that are kind of the biggest causes of, of dental trauma, popcorn. I'm a big fan of popcorn, I love popcorn, uh, but we do see a lot of trauma from unpopped kernels. And the problem is when you're eating popcorn, you're usually preoccupied with something else. So you're watching a movie, you're watching a game, and you, you put a bunch of popcorn in and you bite down on the unpopped kernel and the force just causes your teeth to crack or break. So just cautious eating, um, avoid anything like chicken bones, um, anything really hard. A lot of it's common sense, but if you just don't think about it, you don't put two and two together. So again, cracks are very common as we get older into our 30s and 40s. And like I said, the, the, the teeth that we need to be worried about are your molars and your premolars, the back teeth that do all the force and all the chewing. And once they've had a filling, they're a little bit more prone to breaking down. One thing also to consider is once you lose a tooth or multiple teeth, those remaining teeth all of a sudden are pulling a lot more weight. And so they're gonna be under a lot more duress. They're gonna be under a lot more strain. And so once you start losing teeth here or there, if you don't replace them, it starts the slow process of the remaining teeth starting to break down. Um, and something to consider too is, your front teeth are just designed to cut the food and send it to the back for the big guys. And unfortunately, we have a lot of patients where when they lose back teeth, they're having to do a lot of chewing on their front teeth. No fault of their own, they just don't have anywhere else to chew. But unfortunately, those front teeth are not designed to handle that wear and tear. And so we start to see them break down quicker. So the, the, the lesson here, I guess, is it's really important is as we age, if we start to lose teeth, we really need to be on top of replacing those missing teeth. And we've got lots of ways to do that, whether it's something removable, whether it's something fixed, whether it's a, a bridge or an implant, there's lots of options. But if you don't address the missing teeth, it's gonna make your mouth start to age and break down faster. And this is why regular checkups are so important. If you have a healthy mouth, you may think, why do I need to go to the dentist? They're just gonna do a cleaning that I could do on my own and I've never had problems. Unfortunately, that's only true for a really, really small percentage of the population. Some people are blessed with, I call it the genetic lottery. They won the, the genes that, that don't get periodontal disease. They don't have the, the bacteria that cause decay. Very, very small subset of the population. Everybody else, it's better to have a professional team working with you to make sure nothing sneaks up on you. So regularly scheduled hygiene appointments are very important, not only for us to get in there and do oral cancer screening, uh, for us to make sure there's nothing amiss, for us to find any kind of small problem before it gets bigger. But also there are areas where you can't reach, there are nooks and crannies you can't quite get into. And so it's important to let a professional, our hygienists are amazing, get in there and really keep your teeth clean and, and tip top shape. Um, so it's really important to have a dental team that you trust that will take care of you and has your best interests in mind because the, the saying in dentistry goes, small problems never really go away in dentistry. They're just gonna get bigger. And if it's something you can address today, it's better to do that because it's not gonna get less expensive and it's not gonna get less involved if you just ignore it. Let me expand a little bit more on the genetic lottery. Um, basically, everybody's got four types of bacteria makeups in their mouth. Um, you've either got the bacteria that cause periodontal disease, which is where your bacteria actually attach to the bone cells and the bone gets eaten away and that causes tooth mobility and causes us to lose teeth earlier. Periodontal disease is very hard to fight. Um, it's one of those things, if you catch it early and you can really work hard, you can minimize the damage, you can slow down the bone loss, but eventually it will lead to tooth loss and mobility. The other type of genetic category is people that have bacteria in their mouth that are cause cavities. They attack the teeth. They can brush, they can do everything they can, but they keep getting cavities and they keep having to lose teeth because of cavities. 
The third type of person, uh, I call them the lucky, lucky winners. They have bacteria that don't fall into either one of those categories. Um, they've got good home care. They very rarely have dental problems. Everything is great. And the fourth category is the really unlucky folks who have periodontal disease and the cavity causing bacteria. Uh, and the combination of those two, is, it's a big uphill battle. And that's why it's really important from an early age to really establish a relationship with your dental team so that we can catch anything early because some of the advances and even periodontal disease as far as bacterial treatment and trying to figure out what you've got going on in your mouth and how to save your teeth and make your mouth healthy, we're making leaps and bounds. But we can't help you if we don't know you. So the most important thing is coming in, seeing us, getting that relationship started and letting us help you take care of your mouth. So if you find yourself in the category of, I haven't been to a dentist in a while, don't worry, we don't do guilt trips, we don't, uh, we don't give people a hard time, we're just glad you're taking that initiative. So if you're in that category, if you're looking for a change, if you wanna work with the dental team that, that looks after you and cares for you, please come see us. I'm Dr. Brett Langston, I'm a prosthodontist at Dental Implant and Aesthetic Specialists in Brookhaven, Georgia, and I'm here to help you watch your mouth. See, I, I was all, I was zoned in, I was normal, okay.